So now that I'm happy with the overall shape of the hump, what I'm going to do is grab a little bit more material, some foam, and just take this hump off the bike and then add this foam to the underside, just hot glue it on. And what that'll do is add that little bit of material that I need to cover the frame so that when I do fiberglass over the edge, it's gonna come down to here. Uh, it means I'll have to take it off the bike and it also means that I'll have to make this piece and if I do decide to do the seat pan out of fiberglass as well I'll do that separately but then when I do it separately I'll have this on the bike the actual the made fiberglass piece and then I can actually tie it in um, but yeah that's the process let's see if it works out the way I want it to The next process or the next step to doing this is to apply a really heavy duty um, product called Flow Coat. It's a fiberglass type product. And what it is, it's just a really heavy duty paint uh, that you can fill in, I guess a few small gaps. I'm hoping to fill in some of these big gaps as well. Um, and even if I have to put it on a couple of times. It dries fairly quick. It all depends on the actual catalyst you put with it. But I only get 10 minutes working time with this, uh, the way that I'm gonna mix it. Uh, you can make that more or less depending if it's hotter or colder in your climate. I did what I said and waited for it to start to cure and uh, then I started to try and fill this hole up but it just cured so quick like boom it just went to jelly and then it just basically left me with uh, this mess, which is okay because I'm gonna run a sander over it and then wherever the lows are, I'm just gonna fill up with um, like a bog, uh, like a car filler, and that will just fill in all those little imperfections. And then I'll run the release agent over that and then it's good to go. Next step was basically just sanding it back to try and get rid of all the highs. Uh, there was quite a big high on this side here. As you can see, I've just taken out a bit of the actual uh, flow coat. And there was like the ridge line here was a little bit high at that spot. So I've just gone along and just taken all those down. I'm gonna run like a filler, a car bog, um, over all the dips and all the little imperfections here that you can see. And just fill in any of those little, I guess, craters that are just being formed um, by me carving it out of foam and once that's done final sanding then I can either put a little bit more of this flow coat over it or I can just run release agent straight over the top of it and uh, about six coats of the release agent and it's just like a car wax you just let it dry each time and buff it back and do it again and just do that six times until this has all the little pores and everything completely full and there's no way that once you put the fiberglass over it, it's gonna stick. It just lets it release. There's no point doing, going through all this process if you don't put enough release agent on because then you'll be stuck with a fiberglass mold and the plug stuck inside it, <laughs> which would suck. So uh, yeah, I'm just gonna get stuck into putting some carbog on it. I've gone over the entire surface with the car filler um, just purely because when I was sanding that uh, flow coat, if there was any more sanding than was required, it would actually go through it and into the foam and I didn't want to do that again. So by just putting this layer of car filler on, I can really get the lows uh, out and really just make it completely 
uh, perfect as good as it can be when you make it by hand but <laughs> while that plug is drying I will explain what I'm gonna do here with a seat pan um, I bought this it's 50 by 50 millimeters by 0.4 zinc alum um, and basically it's got a little bit of a slight rounded uh, 90 degree angle here which is what I wanted I didn't want a real sharp edge what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place this in here like this and cut it uh, perfectly between the tank and the actual plug uh, and that'll give a straight edge along the side for the fiberglass to sit so that once the fiberglass goes off it should come off nice and easy hopefully <laughs> and uh, then I'll obviously have a nice square right angle edge for the seat to go on as well for the upholstery. Alrighty, so after I dusted the camera down from all the dust that landed on it just before, um, from all that sanding, I'm still left with a few imperfections um, just I sort of knew this was gonna happen here because when I filled it up with bog I just saw there was too it was too much of a divot to put with one coat and there's a few little other imperfections here some high spots which I'll just fill up with uh, a little bit more bog and then I'll go over it one more time with some sandpaper but overall that's the shape so I'm gonna go over it with a 400 sandpaper um, just to try and get it as smooth as possible and then from that point if there's anything in there that needs attention then I'm going to go over it just once more with a little bit more filler and then go over it and it'll be perfect um, but the 400 is going to get it really smooth and then I just need to put the release agent on it this stuff that I'm using here is a mold release agent you can use car wax it pretty much does the same thing with a new plug like this you want to do about six layers the reason you need to do so many layers of, of the wax is because it's a brand new mold and all of the little pores and holes need to be filled up with this stuff as much as you possibly can so that then once you do your, your actual mold over the top of this plug you can release it and it comes off easily without having any dramas with it actually uh, getting stuck some of the products that I use I've sourced locally however I'm gonna find uh, if not exactly the same very very close to the products that I use to make this the fiberglass the resin uh, everything to go to make your own and put it in a link in the description below basically like a kit if you can imagine uh, so you, all you need to do is click through and purchase the items that are going to get you the same result as what I've got <laughs>
Okay, so this frame here isn't necessarily needed. Um, I built it because I could do it quite fast and I found that I've done this sort of thing in the past and having the mold stuck in position like it is now is gonna be so much easier to lay the glass on the inside than it would be if it's rocking around on me. But you can use anything from a bit of timber or even a towel, wrap a towel around in the circle, uh, twist it up and put it in a circle and then just place this in the middle, which will be enough just to hold it there um, or anything you can think of. But just hot melt glue that on to the actual base and then the base onto this piece of uh, rubbish timber that I'm gonna throw away when I'm finished. So this one didn't come out perfectly as smooth as the other one. Um, this side doesn't matter, it's gonna have the upholstery on it, so I'm not too concerned about that. It's just the side edge that I wanted and I'm cutting it down to here anyway, so it's only gonna be seen this little section across here between my fingers um, and here. So this edge here is gonna be cut off and you won't see any of the top section, it's just this. So I can just sand that off. That's just a little bit of the bog that got stuck to uh, this surface as I pulled it apart. But that's perfectly fine, I can sand that back and once it get paint, it gets painted it gets sanded anyway, so that is spot on perfect. So I've had this bike for a little while now and uh, it's a CX500 82 model and it's in storage at the moment because I haven't started or done anything with it. It does run but very rough, it needs a bit of work done to it and one of my friends who is actually a subscriber now, he <laughs> He hit me up and he goes, look, um, he challenged me and said, could you build that into a scrambler or a tracker with a $1,200 budget? And, uh, and I said, look, I don't know, but it'd make a really good video. So anyone who's, who wants to see that, anyone who's interested in seeing if that's actually possible, um, or if it's something you just want to see because you think, hey, that'd be kind of cool. Uh, let me know, like leave me a comment in the, comment box down below and uh, and just give me a yay or a nay if it's something that, you're inter that you are or you're not interested in seeing. Um, and if we do go down this road, this bike will be pretty much, um, I'll do a cost as I build it, like for instance tires, uh, the seat, how I do the seat, where I get the parts from, um, and anything else that gets done like the handlebars, um, if I do anything with the cluster or the guards, anything that gets done on this bike, like. I will do a cost review as I do it, uh, or at the very end. And then once this bike is complete, uh, I will actually take it on a little adventure with the actual guy who has given me the challenge. And, uh, and we'll take it out somewhere and we might even do an overnight camp somewhere. And then we'll just discuss uh, the build. If that's something that you are interested in, let me know um, by leaving me a comment. And uh, yeah.